You are welcome to this brief review of the Powellhurst Men's Discussion of the Book of Genesis, Chapter 3, the 26th of January, reading from the New International Version. We had three learning objectives for this session. First, to identify who and what was or is the serpent to describe basic steps of recovery from shame, and to accept the joys and hardships of life. The serpent motif is rather prevalent throughout centuries of Middle Eastern mythology. Even when not related to a god, the serpent represented wisdom of the occult, fertility, health, chaos, and immortality, and was often worshipped. Meet the Nakash. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. Serpent, Nakash in Hebrew, may come from a root meaning magical or from another root meaning luxuriant or shiny. In ancient mythology, he is a god or divine being, not a mere reptile. He is said to be crafty, more than any or all earthly creatures, able to reason and to speak. Thus, there may have been no natural animal involved. Professor John Day has remarked, in the Mesopotamian Gilgamesh epic, we read that it was a serpent that snatched and ate the plant of life which Gilgamesh had been seeking, thereby rejuvenating itself rather than Gilgamesh. This could be written as early as 1000 BC. By the 3rd century BC, the serpent is equated in First Enoch with Gadael, one of the wicked angels who descended from heaven to have sex with women on the earth. And by the 1st century CE, Satan, the devil, was first equated with the Eden serpent in the apocryphal 1st century B.C. book of Wisdom, Wisdom of Solomon, but through the devil's envy, death entered the world. Some scholars deny that the Nachash was in any way equated with the Satan or the devil later in the Bible. The Christians melded them together in the book of Revelation. However, as we've just seen, the, this equating of the Nachash with Satan was a Jewish doctrine adopted by Messianic Jews in the writing of the book of Revelation, equating the serpent with the devil, Satan, and dragon. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He seized the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. Thus it was Judaism, not Christianity, that first equated the Nachash with Satan. The New Testament, rather, reflects the teaching of pre-Christian Judaism. The Nachash speaks. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees of the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, for you will die. To what deity did the serpent allude? In chapter 2, it is always Yahweh Elohim, the Lord God. But when the devil speaks, he uses the more general, distant, even mythical name of God, Elohim. So, how does deceit gain our attention? By questioning the word of God. What mistakes did the lady make? Well, she tried to answer the question and even added to the words of God. The Nachash lies. 
You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be as God, knowing good and evil. So, the steps to deceit begin with questioning truth. Did God say? Then to deny the truth. It will not happen. Then to contradict the truth. God knows differently. And then to replace the truth. You will be like God. Or in this context, Elohim, without a verb, can easily be translated in the plural, you will be as gods, referring to other members of the divine council. The humans fall for it. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some of it and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Some interpreters suggest that, before their disobedience, they had been covered with a kind of glory, that their bodies shone as with light. But after their disobedience, they lost their glory and now saw themselves to be naked. The first stage of shame is to cover up, to hide what we have done. Anthropologists point out that many societies in the world are more motivated negatively by shame than by guilt. It is societies that have a strong sense of right and wrong that are more concerned with their guilt and innocence. So then the humans hide. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? An alternate translation of the verse suggests that they heard the thunder of the Lord's storm, the term day suggesting the future day of the Lord when he will come to exact vengeance on his enemies, and that the storm was blowing in the garden. Anyway, the second stage of shame then is to flee and hide. So the first phase of counsel is to assess the situation. So the humans explain. The man answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And the Lord said, Who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The third stage of shame, then, is to deflect, to blame others. And the second phase of counsel is to listen carefully. The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit of the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The fourth stage of shame, then, is to admit what we have done. And the third phase of counsel is to inquire directly. Yahweh sets the Nakash's ultimate destiny. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. Here the livestock and the wild animals suffer the results of the human fall and experience the curse that will be placed on the ground, but more so for the Nachash, for he will eventually be thrown down to the earth 
and will be consigned forever underground in the world of the dead, eating dust, so to speak, throughout his entire existence. Above then, meaning more than, for the animals only die physically, whereas the Nachash will be sent to hell forever. To eat dust, then, is to dwell in the underworld forever. Compare the English phrase, to bite the dust. Yahweh sets the Nachash's temporal destiny, how it shall be for him until the end. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. From about the 3rd century A.D., Christians began to equate the offspring of the woman with Jesus. However, the term offspring is a collective noun, singular in form and plural in meaning, which can take a plural pronoun in English translation. So perhaps we could better say, they will crush your head and you will crush their heel although eventually it will be Jesus who will put an end to this ages-long conflict between the devil and the human race. Yahweh then sets the woman's redemptive discipline. To the woman, he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. Compare the promise in the New Testament, she will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith and love and holiness with self-control. The woman is instructed to put yourself under your husband's protection. Yahweh sets the man's redemptive discipline. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife, and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. To this day, most chronic human diseases can be alleviated through an organic whole, plant-based diet. So, we now dwell under a new world order. Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. By naming his wife, Adam now assumes headship in the marriage and takes responsibility for his family. The name Eve, Chava, is from a root meaning to bow down that sounds slightly like another word for life, Chi. The skin. Did Yahweh replace their lost glory with human epidermis? There is no mention of his slaying of animals or of their donning furry skins. So the Lord may have now provided them with a thicker skin that would protect them in the harsher environment outside of the garden. And the new world reality. The Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and to take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. The plan of God throughout the scriptures is to one day restore Eden with a redeemed humanity who will be resurrected with a new kind of body, much like they had before they disobeyed and fell into sin. So it was better that they not have access to the tree of life in order to be resurrected later, than to eat of that tree and dwell in their fallen condition forever. After he drove the man out, he placed it on the east side of the Garden of Eden, cherubim, 
and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. These flashing swords may have completely surrounded the garden so that no one could enter from any side. Well, what is one fact, insight, belief or action that you have learned from Genesis chapter 3? If you're together with others, then pray aloud, giving thanks to God for His creative mind, power, wisdom, and design. Your assignment for next time is to read Genesis 4 each day in different Bible versions.